Hi, welcome back to the Personality Hacker Podcast. My name is Joel Mark Witt. And I'm Antonia Dodge. This week we are talking about taking action. So I want to make this a short podcast because I don't want you to have to sit here very long because I want you to get you into action by the end of this episode. You hopefully. think we can make it short? You think we can make it 30 minutes or less? Heck no. Is that no, even a thing for us? There's, there's <laughs> no way. Like that's my intent, but it won't happen. I'm sure. Let's see if we can get it in 30 minutes. Possibly. Yeah. So I, I think that massive action is needed more than now than ever in our lives because the world is getting more connected and some things are easier, like it's easier to access information and other people and things like this. But also the ease of connection and movement of energy has made it more difficult to get things done in the world, right? Because there's so much conflicting energy. There's so much noise in the world. We could use noise as a metaphor for like all the conflicting energy, right? Like literal noise, but also the noise of energetic things happening. Like you try to open a restaurant on this side of the street, somebody's trying to open up one on the other side of the street. So now like it's competition and conflict and you got to take action and everybody's trying to do something. Everybody's trying to hustle. Everybody's trying to take action in some way right? But very few people are taking massive action. Very few people are taking action that cuts through all the clutter and all the noise energetically and actually delivers results. They're usually getting low level results in their life, something basic, but they're not getting the results that they want. And I think it's because our lives end up being in all this conflicting energy and noise, almost like building sandcastles on the beach. We build a lot of energy. We put a lot of attention to something. All of a sudden the wave comes in, starts to erode. Maybe it crashes over and wipes the whole thing out. We got to start over. Well, if we could put more action and build faster, we could build more structure, maybe we could sustain the waves crashing into the things that we're trying to do in life. But it's going to take a ton of energy, a ton of intention, a ton of focus and dedication, equaling massive action in our lives. Now, massive action is not sustainable. That's the challenge here. You can't take massive action every single day, every single moment. You're going to eventually run out of gas, run out of energy to do so. So there's another principle that I want to share with you, which is momentum is greater than motivation, meaning that the massive action, the motivation you have to generate to get started, to put the force or, or power into something to make it happen or to create the result in your life, it can't be sustained ultimately. But if you can get momentum behind you, now it takes very little action to keep that momentum going. And once you get it going, don't stop because now you can ride the momentum all the way to the results you want. So I think what we're, gonna, what we're talking about today is how do we create massive action in our lives based on our type, especially, we might not be able to go to every single type, but I do want to talk a little bit about personality types, how do we create that massive action? And then how do we connect it to momentum? So we don't need that massive action every single day, because that might kill us if we have to keep generating that all the time, that would just be unsustainable. The final principle I'll lay in here before we start to unpack all these ideas is the concept of a pattern interrupt. So you probably are already connected to momentum in your life. You're probably already connected to doing things like you are probably doing today, because I am too. I'm doing today what I did yesterday. And tomorrow, I'll probably do what I did today. Like we're on these momentum runs of habits, things that we tend to do, ways we think, ways we behave. And so there's kind of like a three-legged stool here. There is massive action, pattern interrupt, and then momentum. And so what I think we have to do, and pattern interrupt and massive action can kind of be conjoined in the same thing at some times, right? A massive action could be interrupting the pattern of your life. Sometimes that's literally changing your context. It's taking a big, bold move in something. It's signing up for that program that's available. It's going to that city to meet that person or that tribe of people. It's changing jobs. It's risking changing a circumstance that you're in or having a conversation, a challenging conversation with that person, like that massive action could be the pattern interrupt that you need to change the momentum and the direction you're going. And so these, th these three things, I think, work in tandem to get results. So you just gave some examples like, you know, going to the, the signing up for the program, going to the city to meet the person or create the tribe or whatever it is. But what, I mean, how would you define massive action? Definitions are always tough for me, so let me give a let me give more of a personal example, and I th hopefully the definition can emerge from this. So back in the mid two thousands, when I was going through a massive divorce, challenging divorce, and custody issues, didn't like the job I was in. I was trying to reset my life, and so I was trying things like oh, I was trying to blog on my lunch break. I would consider that a small action. I was trying to go to meetup groups in the city I lived in. I would consider that a small action. I was trying to do these things to try to tune my life. And it almost felt like metaphorically, I was trying to fill a glass with water and it was happening so slowly. The water was evaporating before it could fill. 
And I thought to myself, I have to take massive action. I need to fill this glass metaphorically faster than it can evaporate. What can I do to kick this into high gear, to take massive action in my life, to change the way that I want things to go? So I was aware of that there were pod camps happening all over the United States, all over the world, actually, but I was focused in the United States. And I thought, well, I could start going and attending as many pod camps because it's around podcasting and new media and stuff. This is like 2006, I think. I can go and attend as many of these as possible and meet as many people as I can in these groupings. This is the tribe I want to be connected to. These are the people that have shared values and interests that I have. I'd love to connect to them. I like to create media. I'll go start attending these. So that's like medium level action. And I thought to myself, well, how can I, again, take massive action in this? Not just medium action. That's pretty good. Go to different places. I was flying to cities. I was taking trains. I was driving long distances. I was trying to meet as many people at these pod camps as I could on weekends as possible. How could I make that massive action? I thought to myself, well, why don't I start speaking at these pod camps I go to? I'll start putting applications in to speak. Did I know anything more than other people about podcasting? No. Was I like super excellent at new media? No. But I thought, if I don't take massive action, I'm probably never going to see the results in my life. I'll never end up becoming a professional podcaster or a new media creator. So I started to apply to these different pod camps to not only attend them in real life, in person, and drive and fly and move to the places. I started speaking at them. I realized, oh, they need speakers. Like They were desperate for speakers. I'd put an application in. I didn't really know what I was talking about, but I would create a talk. I'd give the talk. I would calibrate. I'd get feedback for that talk. And because I was doing that so much, I got the opportunity to speak at a really big conference in Las Vegas for free. They didn't pay me, but they gave me the opportunity to get on stage in front of a lot of people so I could promote the business I was working on, the social media consulting business and the new media business I was working on. I would have the opportunity to present in front of a large group of people that might hire me to help them with their business. I had no money. I was going through tough times in my separation and custody issues. I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do, but there's this opportunity clear across the country. I was living in Baltimore at the time, and I thought, how can I take massive action around this? So I started networking. I found somebody that was going to gift me, pre-gift me a voucher for a plane flight that I could pay them back for later. And so I got myself to Las Vegas at the time of this talk, and I applied for it. I got accepted. I got myself to Las Vegas. I didn't have anywhere to stay. I had a backpack on my back. I got on stage with my backpack delivered the talk, and I slept in the hotel lobby that night. I think I had like 12 to $14 on me in cash because, I mean, I had no rev- I had no cash on me. I was like so broke at the time. I remember that there was one of those convention hall things like, uh, you know, where you could go in and like see the different types of companies that are like doing podcasting and new media and all this. And one of them had this like wind tunnel set up where there was like dollar bills flying around. <laughs> And I looked at it and I said, oh my gosh, that's lunch and dinner right there. Like that is my lunch and my dinner. And I was so motivated to go into this like 20 second or 30 second wind tunnel. And you're basically it's the wind is spiraling these dollars all around you, your head and stuff. And it's really challenging, but as many dollars as you can grab, basically you can have, you can take them out of the, the thing, but it's really hard to grab them, right? Because they're flying through the air. So I'm in there very motivated. I've got like my shirt up. I'm like trying to shove dollars <laughs> under my shirt because this is like going to be my lunch and dinner. Like, whatever I get in the in these dollar bills is basically going to be the type of meal I can buy next, right? Like that's how, I'm not kidding. That's how broke I was. I had zero dollars in my bank account. But I took massive action. And I'm like, I'm going to make this happen. I don't care what it takes. I'm going to take massive action and create this opportunity in my life no matter what. So I don't exactly know how you define massive action, but I think that's a pretty freaking good example of it. I think that's a good illustration of massive action. And what I'm also calling from that is you bet on yourself. Going all the way back to the beginning of this series, you were betting on yourself. You had faith in your capacity to figure it out. And you took massive action based on having faith in yourself to be able to do it. And so what I'm hearing you say is that massive action is really associated with doing what it takes to get to where you want to be. To wrap the whole series in, my tribe, aka my family, thought I was crazy and they were worried for my safety and health. Like, what what do you mean you don't have a place to stay? My parents said, what are you talking about? Like, they're panicked on my behalf because I'm out in a foreign city away from my hometown 
you know, as a young person, just kind of making my way through the world. And they're like, oh, they're all anxious and stuff. And if I had listened to my tribe, my family, other people, friends and stuff, like, what are you doing? What? Like, maybe I would have limited myself. So again, it, it really matters the tribe you surround yourself with, too, to take that kind of action. I, I you know, now that I'm thinking about it, I think I had an, uh, have a story of massive action as well. So I was also going through a divorce <laughs> or a separation. <laughs> And uh, I had just left the religion of my youth and I was trying to figure out what I was going to do ne- next. And at this time I lived in Anchorage, Alaska. I had no idea what I was going to, I, I mean, I didn't know that what career I was going to choose because I had grown up in the religion that I had grown up in. I, you know, I, I didn't have a career. I really had been just kind of going from thing to thing because to focus on career was considered um, being materialistic. So I had no career. I just had the best jobs I could get. The The phrase was the most amount of money in the least amount of time to be able to take that money and pour it into volunteer work. So I was basically my career was to be a volunteer and for this religion. And uh, and so uh, there, I didn't know that it had given me a lot of career capital. It actually turned out that it had because I had done a ton of public speaking and I had you know, talked with people about very complex topics in a diplomatic way. So I'm actually very grateful for what it gave me, which is a lot of skills and tools that I use now. But at the time, I didn't know that. And I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I really, I didn't have anybody left. Everybody had basically separated themselves from me because of the choices I had made. So I didn't really have anybody. And, or the people I had were was very, very, very tiny little group of people that didn't really have much to offer, you know, in terms of resources, because they were going through tough times themselves. And I was in Anchorage, Alaska, unsure of where I was going to live, separated from my family through both geography and through ideology. And, uh, and so I connected with a group of internet marketers. And I just, I talked them into moving to Las Vegas, Las Vegas again. And we ended up creating this little internet marketing incubator that uh, that I, through just my, I guess, sheer determination, <laughs> encouraged everybody to go do this. And then lived in that little incubator with not two nickels to rub together the entire time. In the meantime, we decided, and I'm not sure why, because I think we we're totally delusional, but we decided that we were in a great space to run a TEDx. <laughs> and so <laughs> I put in the paperwork to run a TEDx, even though I was flat broke, I had never, I had never run an event before in my life. I had no idea what was involved in it. And I was now the person who was the head of TEDx, Las Vegas. It was actually called it TEDx Sin City. And somehow within nine months, we were supposed to gather all the speakers, get the venue, figure out how it all operated and worked, um, fund it, Somehow, even though you can't charge more than, or at least at the time, you couldn't charge more than a hundred dollars a ticket for TEDx, and uh, and then you couldn't have more than a hundred people, so that's not a lot of money to work with. And somehow we were supposed to do all of that, uh, and we did it. I can't even believe we did it. Somehow, just through sheer determination and willpower, and through taking massive action, we were able to put on a TEDx. That was a long time ago, and I I bet on myself. Right. I did what we were talking about in the original original podcast or one of the early podcasts in this series is that I just had faith that I'd be able to figure it out. And I think the reason why we're talking about taking massive action as the culmination of this series is it is the inevitable emergent to all the other things that we're talking about. It with the exception maybe of having the right tribe. Because sometimes sometimes you haven't dialed that piece in yet. Sometimes you're still figuring that piece out. But if you bet on yourself and you have good maps. I think that you can take massive action, even things that are in retrospect, you might even go, how, how did I do that? How did that even happen? I have no idea how I navigated through that. That TEDx almost collapsed like a flan, I would say half a dozen to a dozen times. <laughs> there were so many problems in the back end. And yet we figured it out. We, we made it work. We made it happen. We even filmed it, which is a requirement. We filmed it. We we were able to upload the videos. We were like able to do the entire thing, and we had an audience of people. We even had the old mayor of Las Vegas there as one of our speakers, <laughs> which is kind of insane now that I think about it. We were one of the last pl- venues that Ram Dass spoke at through video. 
And I'm still boggled that that happened. How did we get Ram Dass? I have no idea. How did we get the old mayor of Las Vegas? I, I don't know because we were wildly unqualified for what we were trying to do. But we just did it. We took massive action. So I think that's what you're talking about, right? It's betting on yourself and being willing to do things that feel like they're out of your capacity at the time. There's also two styles, I think, of massive action. We're talking about proactive massive action where you say, oh, that's a thing I'm going to try to do. And then you just jump for it. You take a big action to go toward it. I think there's also opportunities for massive action that are responsive that come into our lives. Like I was at a personal growth conference a couple of years ago and it was running really late. It was a, a group that liked to take their seminars late and it was like three o'clock in the morning and I'm like tired. Everybody's tired. Like we're exhausted, right? Because this is a really late seminar that's work, that's workshopping. And the person running it looks at me and is like, hey, you want to come up and lead a session around personality types? And I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm too tired. I'm, I mean, I'm really spent. And he's like, no excuses. Like, take massive action. At that moment, I'm like, he's right. Why the heck am I saying, I'm, why am I making excuses saying I'm too tired for this? There's an opportunity right here I can respond to. There's a group of people in an industry that I'm already in, personal growth. I can help them. They can find out more about what I do. And here I am leaning back and just saying, oh, I'm too tired. I don't want to do that to myself. Like what, Joel, I like had to almost like metaphorically smack myself. Take massive action, Joel. Be responsive to an invite right now and go up front and lead people in a personality session in this moment. And I did. I got up and I led people through. I don't know. I, there's no recording of it that I know of. So I don't know if I did a good job. It was in the middle of the night. I was bleary eyed, but I gave it my all. And I took action. I spoke as best as I could. I gave the best information I, I could give out, the best advice. And a few people afterward thanked me. So I think it was good. But I think there's these moments that we all have, you too listening, have these moments that you can take massive action by opportunities that present themselves. And you probably have these moments where you kick yourself and you're like, ah, oh, why didn't I take action on that? My life could have been different and you didn't respond to it, but now you know. Now you can respond to those things with massive action when they pop up for you. Yeah, I, I hit on you at a conference and that was massive action for me. That's right. <laughs> and you let me hit on you, which I'm, I don't know if that was massive action for you, but... <laughs> It ended up as massive action. <laughs> That's not what we're talking about, is it? So let's go back to this concept of pattern interrupt. So the the concept of massive action, I think that we have we have defined in multiple ways at this point, but we're talking about the former, which is opportunistically or proactively just doing something that feels outside your house. Are you still I'm laughing st I'm about? I'm still it? laughing about. <laughs> it ended up as massive action. <laughs> And let's talk about pattern interrupts, which that was also an illustration of a pattern interrupt. I guess I derailed us. But the pattern interrupts, I think, is when we're looking at our life going and, and, and trying to figure out, well, what do I do if this is not what I want or there are things that I would like? I think major pattern interrupts are some of the best ways to get out of the previous momentum that we have. Like you said, we're all on momentum runs. We are all in a momentum or a you could even call it a rhythm. Sometimes these momentums are slow and plodding and the rhythm is real sort of templatized and it's just one day bleeding over to the next day. And we feel like we have to have changes. Now, I would um, I would argue going back to what we call the hat model in previous episodes. Um, we, we've got multiple pad podcasts that talk about the hat model. And that stands for healing, achievement, and transcendence, which is almost like the three mega categories of personal growth. And you can be stuck at any one of these. You can be stuck in a healing time period where you did legitimately have healing work you needed to do. And not to rush anybody through healing, but sometimes you can get stuck thinking that you're a perpetual victim or stuck at a place where you perpetually are healing. And and it, it's like it just never works. It never works. And you're in a momentum of seeing yourself as somebody who perpetually needs to be healing. We can do it through achievement sometimes where we are taking like we talked about the massive action piece that was achievement oriented. And that's what we needed to do. But sometimes people can be stuck in achievement. They can be stuck doing these things and just go, go, going. And they're like re just about ready for burnout and they're about ready to collapse. And that is not the massive action that they need to be taking at that moment. They need to interrupt that pattern. Or we can be on a transcendence journey. And the transcendence journey always feels like it's the, the most 
uh, well, it's the most transcendent, isn't it? It's high vibration energy and ego transcendence and spirituality. And wouldn't that just always be a good thing? But sometimes we can get trapped there too. So it's a matter of looking at our lives using good maps. Call back to previous episode in this in this series. Using good maps, diagnosing what is it that's making my life not what I want it to be? What are my glass ceilings that I have put above me for some reason? Because like, I place them there. And what do I need to do to interrupt that pattern? How do I get myself out of those places that have effectively trapped me? So I think what massive action does is it get, it, it's like the thing that pulls you out of the hole you've sunk in. Oftentimes, we're not seeing ourselves as being in a sunken hole. We're not seeing ourselves as the reason why our lives or our days are bleeding from one into the next is because we've actually dug ourselves into a rut. We're in a hole. And massive action is a way of springing out of that, of getting ourselves out of that place, even if that hole is achievement, right? Like we're in a place where we just go, 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 go. And we can't even see that we need to do a pattern interrupt because we're doing all the stuff we're supposed to be doing or we're being you know, so transcendent, but losing touch with reality. Whatever it is, whatever we're doing that we realize we use these good models, these good maps, we're not overly attached to them, but we use them as a way to diagnose where we're at and then we go, okay, I need I need to get out of this. And the best way to get out of it is to disrupt the pattern of the current momentum, take massive action, and attempt to recalibrate ourselves on a completely different momentum run. We will be right back. If you're focused on personal growth, I think you'll resonate with our core content over at personalityhacker.com. We want to see you understand how your mind is wired so you can generate motivation, improve social skills, find career opportunities, and master excellent decision making. But a quick warning, we are advice and action focused in all of our articles, podcasts, and videos. This means that we attract people who like to be challenged to become excellent, to take action, to put in the work to optimize themselves, not simply just gather more information. If you are committed to personal growth and ready to radically find your inner truth, then come over and be a part of our growing community of like minds at Personality Hacker. Now back to the show. I think the idea of introducing maps here is brilliant because I know that we are overvaluing how we, you and me, Antonia, define massive action for ourselves. Like, and we're talking about it in an external, like dramatic thing. Like I'm flying to Las Vegas with no money in my pocket and I'm gonna give a talk on stage for these opportunities. That's not how everybody's wired. Right? I have to, we have to admit that there are personality types that have different wirings and different relationships to that kind of thing. Now, I do believe most people, no matter your personality wiring, can still do well with massive external action. Usually that gets us our results because we are creatures that actually live in an external world that real things happen in. Like things get built, the kings get torn down, relationships are built, relationships break up. Like real stuff happens out here. But I do think there is some aspects of type. We could take the firm model. You know, the firm model groups people into IJs, IPs, EPs, and EJs in the Myers-Briggs system. And we could just look at it through that lens if we wanted to, to say, you and I are EPs in the Myers-Briggs system. As according to the firm model, that means we value freedom. We have a fixation on freedom. And so any action that's going to give us more freedom is probably going to be very appealing to our personality types as EPs in the Myers-Briggs system, right? That's the kind of action we're going to probably pursue. Well, if you're an IJ, your fixation is more on invulnerability. You're going to be concerned about the vulnerabilities that you're going to create. If you go take external action, you're like, well, how, how is this going to leave me exposed to danger, to harm, suffering, whatever? Like you're going to feel vulnerable when you take those actions. I still think they're good to take in the external world, but you might approach them a little differently based on being an IJ. Well, I think IJs, it, because their fixation is invulnerability, there tends to be a sense of always having to be in preparation. I have to prepare before I take action. And the preparation ends up going on for far too long. Like they should have taken action earlier. I think as EPs with a freedom fixation, we have a tendency to take action quickly, but it's not always the right action. So it can be big, massive action, but we didn't take the right action, which means that we have to focus on making sure that what when we leap, we're looking first. Yeah. And then infirm, freedom, invulnerability, rightness, the rightness fixation is what all IPs share because they value their subjective experience more than they value the external world. And so 
It's almost like this, I have the right to have my subjective experience as I move through things. And so massive action needs to be calibrated as, as the right action for you as an IP. Well, and also there tends to be some rebellion there. Well, I don't have to take massive action if it's not right for me. <laughs> and so there's this sense of like, I mean, if you're an IP and you're listening to this, uh, maybe a percentage of you are going to be highly inspired to go, yes, I want to go do that. And a percentage of you are going to be like, screw you, I don't have to do that. <laughs> So there's that sense of of it having, like you said, it has to be right for me. And if you're not already calibrated to stretching and getting out of your comfort zone, then right for my, me might be doing absolutely nothing. And that's what's quote unquote right for me. So freedom and vulnerability, rightness, and the final letter in firm stands for management, which deals with all the EJ personality types. The way that they predict their world, control things, and feel safe is through managing the external world as EJs. Well, as an EJ, you're probably doing a lot of actions, but are you doing the right massive action, right? You're probably doing a lot of low-grade actions all the time, closing loops, making things happen, a lower level, but are you taking the actions that are the right ones to actually move the needle? And sometimes, and this is weird for EJs especially, sometimes right action for EJs is not taking actual action, it's in action and reflection. It's really the massive action you need to take as an EJ. Well, and oftentimes the actions that EJs are taking are an attempt to set up a domain, like create a world or environment that's, that allows them to maintain control over it and set systems up for themselves, which is not a bad idea. It's just sometimes doing that is not the right action. Like you said, reflection is sometimes the right action. And so it's not just taking massive action. It's taking the right action and it will feel massive. Like even if it's stop in your tracks and disrupt what's happening right now and go down a different path that is the, the healthier path for you, it will always feel massive. So in some ways, a disruptive act can itself be massive action disrupting the pattern, doing the thing that's different. And, and like you mentioned, it's like a three-legged school stool. Like sometimes they kind of look like each other. And it's really just a matter of figuring out what, what direction should I be going? What speed should I be going at? What are the things that I'm ignoring and neglecting on my way there? How am I not paying attention to my overall like sort of health and momentum and achievement and transcendence, right? Like bringing in these good maps to diagnose where you're at and then uh, and then derailing yourself intentionally if you are not on the right path and sometimes derailing yourself intentionally means going and doing something cra that seems crazy right and to an EJ doing nothing can sometimes seem crazy now there are some EJs that are like no I'm I'm good at doing nothing <laughs> <laughs> so this is a this is a trend right it's <laughs> not a rule <laughs> but there are some EJs that are like I just I have to keep closing the loops if I don't keep closing the loops what everything's going to fall apart and you've created an environment that 100% leans on you closing those loops and so if you didn't take that action it would be massive cuz the whole world would collapse around you and so ask yourself that might feel good. It might feel like you're managing things, but is that fixation on management the right action for you? Should you actually be tapping into what is more sustainable or what is more authentic or right for you as an individual? Like, is it honoring you or just honoring your fixation? So a piece of that map, right, the looking at the map and doing a good diagnostic helps you determine what massive action is for you. So when I said, what's massive action, Joel? And you're like, I know what it looks like. Well, I have seen people of certain types take massive action by not taking action. And again, it feels massive. So this is something that you're going to have to determine for yourself. What is massive action for you? What will get you on the path of getting your goals accomplished? What allows you to be the best version of yourself? Are you doing that? Or are you allowing one day to bleed into the next? And if that's the case... You may not be betting on yourself, right? You might be allowing the rhythm. You might be betting on the rhythm. And the rhythm might be something you got from somebody else or something from a lower place inside of yourself. You're not actually betting on that discrete voice like we talked about in the episode on betting on yourself. You might not be hearing that discrete voice that tells you what direction to be going. You might not be consulting the map that indicates the healthiest position and the healthiest way to interact and engage with your cognition. And you might not be getting the support you need. 
So all of these things might be get, like you might be on a roll, but it's the wrong direction. It is uncalibrated. So a big piece of this is betting on yourself, having those good maps, doing everything you can to create a tribe of people who are supportive and then taking the massive right action in order to get to where you where you know you can be. So then where does this final piece of momentum come in? Because I think momentum is key. It's the support structure of the massive actions or side note, inactions. <laughs> it's what sustains this because you could take a ton of action. You know, I could go to that that seminar, that workshop, that speaking opportunity I had in front of a lot of people, take a huge action, give the talk, and then at the end, not give out my website or my phone number, not create any sustainability or momentum from it, right? The whole point of taking the big action is to infuse a ton of energy into the system that's running to create a momentum run of things that are happening in the future. So it's not enough just to take the action. You have to connect that to something sustainable. And I think momentum is very sustainable. Momentum is like, you know, it takes a few kicks to get going on a skateboard. But once you're going on the street, you just take a kick every once in a while or on a bike, you know, bicycle, you're pedaling. It takes a minute or two to get started, get up to speed. But once you're in, in speed, you can gear it up high and you can just very little effort keeps you going on a long distance, right? This is what momentum does for us. The starting point is tough. It takes massive action to get going. But then once you're in motion, once you're moving the direction you want to move, now it's a lot less effort to, to sustain that. And then you can put massive action to other things you want to create momentum around. Yeah. And if if the massive action or the right action is inactivity and it's like, well, that, that will decrease momentum. Well, that's removing momentum from the wrong action. You actually want to take that momentum and recoup it for yourself, right? Take that energy back and then recalibrate to another direction and then take massive action towards that direction. So for some, it's actually a matter of going in reverse a little bit, right? I'm heading the wrong direction, so I have to stop that. I have to disrupt that momentum, back up a little bit or at least rest, recalibrate, find my bearings, go the right direction, and then pour that massive action into that calibrated trajectory and then keep that momentum going. So sometimes it's not just a matter of like, I'm at a start, I'm from ground zero, I just get to choose a direction. A lot of times the reason why this is so difficult to do is because we are we are recalibrating ourselves. We're going a different direction, which means stopping the current momentum and then repouring that momentum into a different path. That can be really, really tough. I mean, I wanna acknowledge that, that is tough. I mean, that's both of our massive action stories, Joel, actually start from have we were going the wrong direction and we had to stop that we had to pull back and then we had to go a different direction which is why massive action was so crucial and critical because we needed to get momentum for this completely different life so this podcast that you're listening to along with me and antonia right now you're here with us this is a massive action for me and antonia this whole short series we just recorded because at the time of this recording, and I'm hoping this bears out, I'm hoping all the actions line up. I'm going to take action regardless if it's a success or not. The intention is for us to create a new program that you can be involved in that's going to be over a period of time for you to be... All the details are still emerging. So by the time you hear this recording, because we're recording this a little bit ahead of time, we should have those details in place. Setting up this new program and the intentions of it, tuning to how to connect your personality type to the path forward in your life, and again, there's going to be details probably coming out around this podcast that'll have much more specifics around the intent here. But it's massive action. I had the idea a couple of weeks ago. I've been planning it and working on it. And I thought, you know, I could probably plan this for the next year or I could take massive action, set this up and start impacting people's lives directly going forward. And that's what I intend to do. That's what Antonia tends to do. We intend to connect to a new program probably at the time of this recording, you have details for it, going forward that are going to be a massive action for us and hopefully set us on a teaching trajectory, helping people connect personality type to real things in their life even more than we've already been able to in small mentorships. We're trying to amplify this, bring it in a real tangible way to your life, find practical solutions. And for me, I'm a little nervous. I'm like, I don't know how it's going to go. I have no idea. It puts us a little bit at jeopardy. Like if it doesn't go really well, it's not so much that it's a it's a cost in of itself, but it's certainly opportunity cost. We could be doing other massive actions in other ways. So it's a little bit of a risk. It's a little bit of a challenge. And I've decided that we're going to do it anyway. We're going to take the leap of faith and create this program going forward. And it's a lot to it. It's just a lot to do to make this thing happen. And we're very busy. But we're dedicated 
to working with you and other people of like minds like you to connect, again, your understanding of type to how do you move forward? Where do you go with this information? Where do you go in your journey next? That's right. And a big part of this program is to help you bet on yourself, just like we talked about. How do you bet on yourself? Focus on your your individual journey of becoming the best version. But that means that you have to have self-trust. You have to be able to lean on yourself. You have to know yourself well enough to, you know, to, to have that faith. So a big piece of it's going to be betting on yourself. A big piece of it is going to be connecting the map of type to your life. So creating a good map, which means a good relationship to that map. We're hoping to create tribes out of this, right? People of like minds gathering together, meeting each other and supporting each other through these journeys. And then ultimately, what is the massive action you need to be taking in your life right now? How do you diagnose that? What is the direction you should be headed? And then what is a massive action you can take to build momentum to get there? So we're doing our job by taking massive action on our side. If this program, the details of it that are going to be more surrounding this podcast, because this podcast is evergreen, meaning you can listen to it 10 years from now to be relevant. So we don't give the specific dates and details. But if you get uh, an email from us or you see a YouTube message and we invite you to take massive action to join this program, I recommend you bet on yourself. I'm betting on us, me and Antonia, to deliver for you. I believe we can help move the needle in your life. And I want you to bet on yourself as well. If it's a fit, if it's not a fit, don't do it. But if it's a fit and you're on the fence, I would favor and have a bias toward action if I were you. Yeah, absolutely. And regardless, we hope you have enjoyed this series. We hope it has inspired you and encouraged you to really, really rest into the potentiality that you have You have uh, to be able to take the actions you need to take, have the best relationships you can have with yourself, with the tools that you're using, and with other people. And so we really hope that this has encouraged you to do the right action in your life, move the needle, give you, give you a little bit of a nudge. And as a bonus, we learned two new words through this series. <laughs> we learned the word aptitudinal and That's we right. learned the wor- word uh, odd, oddballing. I already have them in the envelope, sending them to the uh, Webster's Dictionary headquarters. Uh, sorry, oddbality. <laughs> oddbality. That's right. Oddbality. So if nothing else, you got those gems. I don't think we left. I don't think we're within 30 minutes. Well, we're, we're close enough. We're close. Well, in our 10 Minute Type Advice podcast, we have an asterisk next to 10 <laughs> because we never make it in 10 minutes. <laughs> it's 10 Minute Type Advice in about 10 minutes, which is sometimes 20 minutes, <laughs> But about 10. (laughs) Well, I think I even say that in the intro. I'm like, it's in about 10 minutes. You know. know, Roughly. Yeah, it's never less than. Well, this is never less than, but it's not an hour like it usually is. So that's what we mean by 10 minutes. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So what's coming up for you? You've been listening about massive action. Are you completely turned off by this idea? You're like, oh my gosh, if I listen to them any longer, I might make changes that make me feel nervous. I don't want to do that. (laughs) I'm an IP and you don't know me. (laughs) Yeah, or whatever. I don't know. But what's your story? We want to hear from you. Come over to personalityhacker.com directly below this episode. Leave a comment, ask a question, share your story about action, momentum, pattern interrupts. Going to a conference, you have no money in your pocket to speak. Would this be terrifying for you? Could you do it? Are there other actions you've taken that you're really proud of you'd like to share with us and the other people in the community? We'd love to hear these stories. So come over again to personalityhacker.com and make your voice heard. I'm kidding about the IP types. They're some of the, I mean, in some ways, they're some of the easiest to inspire. You know, when they're like with you, they are with you. And they're like, yeah, so I listened to your podcast and now I've completely revolutionized my world in a week. So it's either that kind of IP or the you don't know me IP. And you never know what you're going to get, right? You never know. And so I love you all. And if you enjoyed this podcast, you can subscribe to us on iTunes and various Android platforms. If you leave a rating review for us on iTunes, it helps us out a lot. We have a book. It's called Personality Hacker. Go get a copy if you don't already have one, by the way. It's actually not bad. It took us a very long time to write it. It was one of the biggest challenges of my life because I'm not a writer. I'm an orator. You took massive action in saying yes to writing this. I did take massive action. And the publisher was like, how long do you think it'll take to write? And I was like, I don't know, three or four months. Eighteen. Year and a half. Year and a half. But they stuck with us. I mean, the pressure was pretty bad towards the end, but we did it. We got it out. And you should go read it because it was a labor of love and a lot of psychological bullying from the publisher. (laughs) 
<laughs> in oh. the best way possible, in the best way possible. So go get yourself a copy. And if you enjoyed it, you can leave us a rating and review on Amazon or on Goodreads. It also helps us out a lot. We have a suite of programs that are designed to help you navigate this complicated world and become the best version of yourself through the lens of personality type. We have a program that is brewing, right? And that you're going to get lots of great information from that will help you bet on yourself, create a good map, find your tribe, and take massive action. But we also have a catalog of programs that might be suited to you as well. We have a program called Empowered. It is designed for INFJs and INFPs. We did a interview series with some incredibly high quality INFPs and INFJs, giving you a fantastic advice to become empowered, right? Some of the biggest challenges that people of your type experience are addressed in that program, and you're going to love it. Go get yourself a copy. We also have a program called Unleashed that is designed for INTJs and INTPs. Same deal. Amazing human beings that we interviewed gave great recommendations, and we address things like social anxiety. We address emotional intelligence, and we also address motivation, which is a biggie. So go check that out. We have a program called Intuitive Awakening, if you haven't heard of it, and we highly recommend that. That helps you rest in on your intuition and know when you can trust it and also become the best version of yourself so that you can trust it more often. And my favorite program right now is the Tools for Emotional Survival program that we just delivered earlier this year. And it helps you determine the best way to increase your stress management. How do you deal with stress? Based on your personality type, there are different tactics you can use to become better at managing stress in your life. There's also a program on uh, self-care and the best ways to create self-care and one on remaining optimistic in this world. Go check those up. The Tools for Emotional Survival Suite is an absolute fantastic program, and it is at the personalityhacker.com catalog. So pick one up, the one that's right for you. And thanks for being with us on this short series. This is very exciting for us to create some of this content around these ideas. So thank you for going on this journey with us. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't heard the other episodes that precede this one, it's a little five-part series. I think it will be really powerful for your life. My name is Joel Mark Witt. And I'm Antonia Dodge. And we'll talk with you Yes, you on the next Personality Hacker podcast. If you're focused on personal growth, I think you'll resonate with our core content over at personalityhacker.com. We want to see you understand how your mind is wired so you can generate motivation, improve social skills, find career opportunities, and master excellent decision making. But a quick warning. We are advice and action focused in all of our articles, podcasts, and videos. This means that we attract people who like to be challenged to become excellent, to take action, to put in the work to optimize themselves, not simply just gather more information. If you are committed to personal growth and ready to radically find your inner truth, then come over and be a part of our growing community of like minds at Personality Hacker.